we go. Okay, so now we're recording so we can share this with everybody afterwards. Um, for those who have not met me, my name is Arlena Elliott and I'm the event coordinator at Kansas State University for the Center for the Advancement of Entrepreneurship. So the state um, wide Kansas Entrepreneurship Challenge is hosted here at Kansas State within the College of Business. And so that is why I'm here sharing some information with you guys. If you have questions at any time, um, put them in the chat so I can go ahead and address that. Or um, on the last slide, you'll have my email information. So that way you can reach out with any questions you may have. So let's get started. The first question to kind of cover is, what is KEC, right? So if you haven't heard of the Kansas Entrepreneurship Challenge, this is an event that's sponsored by the Kansas Masonic Foundation and the Kansas Masons in partnership with Kansas State University and the Network Kansas Youth Entrepreneurship Challenge, YEC, um, series to promote entrepreneurship and small business development in Kansas. So this competition is for student-created, managed, and owned ventures. So chances are uh, most of people joining me all have local YEC competitions that you are putting on that your students will participate in and then the winners or those selected through open review which we'll step into in just a bit will join us in April for the statewide Kansas Entrepreneurship Challenge. So in the past, we have given away $75,000 worth of prizes to student entrepreneurs. So that's a big deal, right? That's an awesome opportunity for your students. This past April, April 2019, we actually uh, raised that number to $77,000 for 2019. And that's, again, an awesome amount. Uh, we were able to impact a lot of students, some of whom you may know. So that's the why, right? Is to get the students together, networking with other student entrepreneurs, and obviously for them to also win money to be able to invest back into their business or into their education, right? So how do your students qualify for the Kansas Entrepreneurship Challenge? There's kind of two ways, right? So your students could be a local event winner. So the top team from each of the Network Kansas YEC series or Kansas Mason sanctioned event automatically qualifies. Um, if that top team is not able to participate, the event organizers may select an alternate team to send to KEC. Um, all of the teams um, must submit a three-page executive summary of their concept through the KEC website by March 27, 2020. And again, we'll get into some key dates here in just a bit. So the second way for your students to be able to participate in the Kansas Entrepreneurship Challenge would be through the open review entry. And so we allow up to 15 teams to be selected by um, the open review entry. And so these students would submit their three page executive summary, just like the other students, but we would then have judges review this and grade it based on the criteria that's listed on the website. And a, again, up to 15 of those teams would be selected to also compete on the day of the event. So those are two main ways for your high school students to be able to participate in the Kansas Entrepreneurship Challenge. The next would be the university division. So we have nominated university representatives where we've already reached out to universities. We've had partnerships for the last couple of years where um, certain universities are able to send two teams to the Kansas Entrepreneurship Challenge finals. And same for all the other divisions, they have to submit a three page executive summary of their concept by March 27th. But this year we are launching a new division for university where we're actually going to extend the open review entry that we've done in the past in the high school division, except specifically for community colleges. So this is another great way for high school students who have participated in the Kansas Entrepreneurship Challenge to be able to continue their participation through um, their education at a university or at a community college. So we're really excited about being able to launch that in 2020. And we know that the high school students really love being able to interact with the university students during the trade show and a few other times throughout the day. Um, and I think it's just inspiring for them to be able to see um, where they can be, right? 
So the submission requirements I've already kind of touched on. So it's a three page executive summary. Obviously that submitted work needs to be the original work of those team members. Any submission that does not meet those requirements will be eliminated, unfortunately. So um, the executive summary format requirement is no longer than three pages, at least 10 point font, at least uh, 0.75 margins on all four sides for little uh, for readability, right? And this must be submitted in PDF form. Next, we'll touch on the high school divisions. So this is always tentative because it depends on the students who are competing. And, but this is what we had this past year. So this past year, we had existing business, agriculture, technology, and open. And so the businesses are um, kind of put into these categories. However, again, the KEC faculty and staff do reserve the right to change these categories. If we had two agriculture submissions and 25 technology submissions, obviously then we would need to kind of change the, how, how our divisions are um, done. So tentatively, these are the divisions that your students could be participating in. The university division has a technology division as well as an open division. So a little bit less than the high school students. Here is probably the most important slide that I'll cover with you all today because these are the key dates for the 2020 competition. So the first key date is March 27th and this is the submission deadline for all entries. So the local teams who have won a YEC event need to submit that three page executive summary by March 27th, as well as the high school or the college students who are submitting through open review. All of those three page executive summaries need to be in by March 27th. On April 6th is when we will announce the teams that were selected through open review. So if you had a student who submitted through open review on April 6th is when the list of finalists would be announced and your student would know whether or not they were competing. Um, another important date is April 24th, which is the release of the judges' questions to the finalists. And I'm gonna cover this in the next slide about the competition format. If you have not um, competed with KEC in the past, this past year when we um, launched our new mock boardroom format. So um, we'll get more into that on the next slide. But last but not least, the arguably uh, the best date, right, is April 28th, which is the day of the Kansas Entrepreneurship Challenge for 2020. So as I kind of prefaced in the last slide, the competition format um, is very similar to what we have done in 2019. And the format we called Mock Boardroom, and it's designed to help teach and reward um, adaptability, critical thinking, creative problem solving, kind of those soft skills in our aspiring high school entrepreneurs. So based on a review of the executive summary, the judges will provide a list of questions to the participants, and then we will pass those questions along to the students. And the students will be able to arrive on the day of with those questions, and they're then able to answer them live and have the judges ask questions right there in the mock boardroom. Uh, this year, we are making things a little bit different. So last year, students participated in one mock boardroom with anywhere from five to seven judges in the room. This year, we are launching um, more of a mentoring type setup, okay? So you, we will still have the traditional mock boardroom format, but students will be presenting to multiple sets of judges. So they will get to give their mock boardroom presentation and answer those questions as well as get live questions from the judges and feedback from the judges as it's happening with multiple different sets. And we're really excited about this. We are excited to be able to um, offer a little bit of a closer connection between the students and the judges and to give them more of that experience of being in front of um, a mock boardroom, right? So again, the format is closed to the public. The time will begin when the presenter begins speaking. 
and teams are not allowed to use a slide presentation, um, but prototypes, props, or index cards are allowed. So for example, if your student needed to have their questions on an index card or anything like that, they are more than welcome to use that. Um, any supporting material just needs to be easily removed from, this, from the room within two minutes, right? So we wanna make sure that that material is easy to take in and out to allow for other students to get into their mock boardroom. The mock boardroom scoring. So this takes into account two things. First, when the judges go through the executive summaries prior to the competition date, they will judge um, based on the student's business model as well as their product or service offering. So this accounts for 20% of their total score. This is then taken into account with the entrepreneurial characteristics which are judged on the competition date in the mock boardroom. So these are 20% um, realistic, 20% justification, 20% specificity, and 20% originality. So one of the questions that we have gotten is, how should our students be angling their presentation, right? Should they be speaking to an investor, a consumer, et cetera? And we're hoping that with the mock boardroom format, that question kind of becomes obsolete, right? So the students can look at these mentor, these judges as mentors, as um, kind of a faux board member, right? And so they should be uh, talking to them in that way. And it will also depend based on the questions, right? Sometimes a judge might ask a more financially pointed question, but there is um, the judges are not told to score a certain way, and we prefer to allow the students to uh, look, keep that open-ended based on the product or service that they're offering. So hopefully that will answer that question for you guys. Next, we have the 7th through 12th grade trade show, which is sponsored by Network Kansas. And so up to 30 students from the 7th to 12th grade will be eligible to participate. And we do this in our atrium in the College of Business and we do it over lunch. So high school students will say they would like to participate in their application with, through, through the submission process on our website. And if they are one of the first 30, they'll be announced after the open review entries. And they will come on the day of, and they'll be provided a six foot table, access to Wi-Fi. And at that time during lunch, KEC attendants and fellow students at K-State and any, any of the visitors who have come to campus are able to go around and vote for their favorite business. And that is how the award winner is determined. And this was my favorite part of the Kansas Entrepreneurship Challenge last year. It was amazing to see the setups that the students brought and being able to see them interact and see what the other students had to offer. I'm really looking forward to this again for 2020. Um, the prizes are not set for 2020 yet. We're still waiting on a few additional details, but just to give you a frame of reference of what the prizes were for 2019, I've listed those on the PowerPoint here. So the high school prizes, the winner of each division made $4,000. The runner up was awarded 2,500. And there were two honorable mention awards at $1,000 each. On top of that, every qualifying team made $250 for showing up and presenting in person and for going throughout the experience. And this is something that, again, is very exciting for me because all, all of the students are able to go and take away not only valuable feedback from the judges and the experience of having presented their product or service, but also they're able to have um, something to take back to physically invest. And these prizes will be updated on our website as soon as possible. So just make sure that you're checking the website for the most up-to-date information. University prizes last year, the winner of each division took home $5,000, the runner-up took home $4,000, and honorable mention took home $2,500. Again, all qualifying university teams received $250. So like I just mentioned, you can visit our website for more information. It lists the contest policies, how to qualify, the submission requirements, the divisions, and kind of everything that I've covered today with you guys. Um, and it will hold all the information regarding the prize amounts. It will have the link to registration once it is live. 
And so just make sure that you save the date, April 28th, and make sure um, that you're going over those key dates and you have them marked down with your students to ensure that you are able to have them participate in the Kansas Entrepreneurship Challenge. Last, we do have some additional resources. So I know that you guys are provided um, the online guide to feasibility planning that you're able to use in your classroom that Dr. Jackson, the director of the Center for the Advancement of Entrepreneurship has provided. And again, our website has additional information and resources regarding um, entrepreneurial support that we can offer. So at this time, I would love to take any questions from you guys that you may have. And if you can't think of any now, I am happy to have you email me at the address on the screen and I would be happy to answer your questions. So if anybody has any questions, I can wait around to answer some. And if not, then we'll see. Um, I just wanted to point out a couple things, actually, that last slide you had before this one, um, I had a few different teachers really comment on how great that feasibility planning is. So if I could just shout out to that and have some people feel like, feel free to share that with those teachers if they're kind of coming up with a um, curriculum to put together. I feel like that's been really helpful. Um, one question I had, and you kind of talked about it, but when a student comes into the mock boardroom, did you say, did you want them to, you know, quickly give something first and then go into the questions or is it just go in there and stand and wait for their board members to talk? Um, how did you want it to start? Right. So I think that generally the students should give an opener. What that okay. opener looks like is going to depend based on the student. Um, I would recommend kind of a refresher because obviously each of these sets of judges are going to be reading quite a few executive summaries. So we wanna make sure to remind them what our product or service is, and then we want to go ahead and jump into the question. So there is no firm rule, but if I had to just give a personal recommendation, I would say maybe a 30 second refresher on you know, introducing who I was, what I was doing, why I was doing it, and then um, being able to go ahead and loop those questions back into my presentation to them. Shelly, do you have a question? Okay, hi. <laughs> um, so I'm curious, um, I know you mentioned as well with the mock boardroom that it was closed to the public, but is there a way to, um, I know last year we had, they could bring in one person with them. Sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> um, but I know there were a few that they had their sponsors there or a teacher there is that going to be permitted again this year great question shelly so unfortunately i don't believe that's going to be the case this year only because there are a number of rooms um, and they are mainly conference rooms so they're a bit smaller and so the sponsors will be able of course to go into the rooms as they are available you know if, as long as there is room um, sponsors are happy to go in there however unfortunately i don't know that we'll be able to allow students to bring in um, a what we previously referred to as their fan club member into the rooms only because there is a bit of um, disparity amongst the room sizes. And so we want to make sure to keep that as fair as possible. Gotcha. All good. Thank you. Yeah. Great question. Will there be any part of the day that will be live recorded? Um, you know, last year and the year before it made sense to do something with the elevator pitch, but this year there won't be anything. Correct. Yeah. So this year there is no elevator pitch to allow the students to have more of the, um, I want to say one-on-one, -on -one, although it's not quite one-on-one, -on -one, but the personal experience of the mock boardroom. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm really excited about that. The trade show will be completely open to the public. However, it won't be recorded anywhere. So unfortunately, other than that, being open to the public, there is nothing at this point that's going to be recorded or live streamed for the public eye. Okay. Sierra, you can walk around and Facebook live it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. 
Well, and, and again, we obviously are still in the planning stages of all of this. So if anybody has any opinions, um, feel free to, again, just shoot me an email on the, on what you see at the screen. And I am happy to take that into consideration and to do my best to work together to figure out what we can make to, for the students to have the best experience. Arlena, this isn't really a question, but I just want to, again, thank you on behalf of Network Kansas and beyond, on behalf of our e-communities for taking the time today to do this and to answer all of our questions and for your openness and willingness to work with all of us. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are so welcome. I'm happy to be a part of the team and uh, hopefully this terrible camera angle works out for the recording for everybody. Uh, <laughs> and I appreciate you guys bearing with me because I know that a lot of the important information like the prizes and things like that aren't quite finalized at this point, but I promise that we are in progress and looking to kind of publish that information as soon as we can. Any other questions? Something I just want to clarify then. So just the, the changes from this year to last year are just simply instead of doing elevator pitch, we're doing twice mock boardroom. So the components are executive summary and mock boardroom, and then maybe a trade show if they submit their um, application in time. Is that what you would say kind of would be a summary from this year to last year? Yes. Um, okay. That number will be more than two though. So they will go to multiple oh, okay. throughout the day. Okay. Um, depending on, again, the division and the final number of participants and how we're able to divvy that up, um, they will be experiencing, I'm hoping, anywhere from three to four okay. mock boardrooms. And then and they'll be divided by industries and then awarded prizes that way? Yes. Correct? Okay. Yes. Uh, one suggestion, I guess, if you wanted to live record anything, maybe just the awards would be nice for some people to see okay. that aren't there. I will write that down. Any other questions? Okay, well, if there are no more questions, I will go ahead and stop sharing here. Again, don't forget that you guys are more than welcome to shoot me an email at any time. I'm happy to help. Um, and I look forward to seeing all of you in April. Thank you.